I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Do you need to lose 50, 75, 100 pounds? Weight loss drugs are gaining in popularity. How do they work and are they a good fit for you? Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Samantha Harris. She's an endocrinologist with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group. She specializes in weight management and diabetes care. Thanks so much for being with us, doctor. Thank you for having me, Susan. So talk about these weight loss drugs. How do they work? Yes. So there's a lot of increased popularity with these medications, but they essentially work by telling your brain that you are not as hungry. They can also slow down emptying of the stomach so that you get full faster and you stay full longer. And um, who were they intended for? Well, they were formulated as both diabetes medications as well as weight loss versions. So most people with diabetes would qualify. And then some people who struggle with um, their weight would also qualify. It's usually based on BMI and other medical conditions. So anyone- and BMI with- is what? BMI is a body mass index, which is just a calculation based on someone's height and weight. Um, anything over 30 is considered obesity in terms of a BMI and someone with that BMI would qualify for weight loss medication, but also someone with a BMI of 27 or above, if they have a weight related medical condition, they may also potentially qualify. And what would a weight related medical condition be? Right. So there are some standard weight related medications like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, reflux, but there's a lot of other medical conditions like arthritis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, things like that, that we also consider when uh, looking at the whole picture of someone struggling with their weight. And how long do you take these medications? So in terms of taking the medications, this can be a struggle for people because really it's a lifetime commitment. And I know that's a scary thing to hear, but generally speaking, all of the studies have shown if the medication helps you lose weight and then you stop the medication, the weight almost always comes back. So, so that's the question. So you take this medication for how long a period of time, what weeks, months, and then when you stop it, the weight automatically comes back. Generally speaking, it does come back. Unfortunately, that's what the studies have shown us. So these are chronic medications, just like if you were to take a blood pressure medication for years, if not the rest of your life. So we do anticipate people taking these medications will be on this medication or some other form of weight loss medications, whether injectable or pill form, probably for the rest of their lives, if not for years or a, a decade or two. And so how overweight do you have to be in order to be eligible to take these medications? So it really depends. Like I said, BMI, the body mass index calculation based on height and weight. So some people who are struggling with, you know, 30 pounds of extra body weight may qualify. Definitely people 50 to hundred pounds um, overweight may qualify for the medications. Although discussing realistic results is also important because people who are trying to lose hundred, 200 pounds may actually do better with something like weight loss surgery. Oh, interesting. Okay. So what side effects do these drugs have? That's a good question. So in terms of side effects, because they make, they tell the brain that essentially you're already fed, um, they can decrease appetite for some people. It can also make them a a little bit less thirsty as well. Um, But by slowing down emptying of the stomach, food can sit there much longer. So the biggest side effects are usually stomach related. We're talking things like nausea, even vomiting, bloating, constipation, because the gut is just moving a lot more slowly than normal. Do those side effects resolve over time? The side effects tend to get better over time, especially the, the stomach side effects. Um, But if you ever increase the dose, the side effects can come back, but usually the body seems to acclimate. Certain medications seem to cause more side effects than others. And we're still sort of learning as more and more of these medications are coming out, which have more effects on the stomach and these types of symptoms. Who should not be taking these drugs? There are a few people who definitely should not be on these medications. So people who are trying to get pregnant or are pregnant or are breastfeeding or are not supposed to be on the medication. It hasn't been studied in pregnancy. Um, Anyone who has an allergic reaction or hypersensitivity to the medication or a history of pancreatitis that hasn't really been resolved or treated or someone with a family history or personal history of MEN or medullary thyroid cancer, which is a very rare form of thyroid cancer that can run in families. And there is a, a warning for that with these medications as well. Are there certain medical conditions that someone has that would actually prevent them from taking um, this weight loss medication? 
what's beautiful about these medications is that most people qualify, especially people who have diabetes or heart disease, which is nice. It's not, they're not stimulating medications. So they don't usually interact with blood pressure medications. In fact, they can lower blood pressure. However, there are some people that just should not take it. So people who already have delayed stomach emptying might notice worsening of their symptoms and just not tolerate them. As I said, people who have allergies or hypersensitivity, the medication shouldn't be on it. Um, pancreatitis, um, the only exception would be if someone had pancreatitis from a gallstone and now the gallbladder and the gallstone are no longer present, that mm -hmm. might be an option. And then that family history or personal history of medullary thyroid cancer might also be a reason to avoid the medication. Should these drugs be taken in conjunction with proper diet and exercise, or does it even matter? It is important to use the medications as a tool to help you change your diet and exercise. A lot of people are finding they're able to lose weight successfully with medication without being as active. And unfortunately, that can result in a greater proportion of muscle loss than fat loss than we would like to see. And we don't want people just to lose weight, right? We want them to be healthy. We want them to be strong. So ideally they would be prioritizing really high quality food, high protein, vegetables, and also exercising in particular weight bearing exercise to maintain their muscle mass so that they're not losing as much muscle during the weight loss phase. What if you're just trying to lose 20 pounds, 10 pounds? Are, are these medications good for you for that type of weight loss? I don't recommend it for what I would consider cosmetic purposes. Um, number one, insurance usually doesn't cover it and they're quite expensive, especially the injectable weight loss medications. Number two, if someone's body mass index is not at least 27, really the FDA says not to use a weight loss medication. You kind of have to weigh the pros and cons, the risks and the benefits. And a lot of times using a medication long-term, we're talking years for just someone to lose 10 to 15 pounds, um, may not have a lot of value or health improvement. When should you go see a doctor to explore trying to see if you qualify and want to take these weight loss medications? That's a great question. So if someone has tried to lose weight with diet and exercise, and most people who struggle with their weight have been trying for years, right? This isn't new to them. If you've tried diet and exercise, maybe lost weight and then regained it as most people do, the time might be now to consider a medication uh, in addition to those other lifestyle changes to help you lose and maintain that weight loss, which like I said before, can be even harder. And then anyone who is meeting those criteria, so body mass index of at least 27 with medical conditions or 30 should really start thinking about um, how they can successfully lose weight and maintain that weight loss um, beyond the traditional means that we're used to. Any final thoughts, doctor? These are great medications. They can be very helpful. So I recommend anyone considering them meet with their doctor to talk about the options and uh, see what would be a good fit for them. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Susan, for having me. Um, if you'd like more information on these weight loss drugs, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.